This educational gambling video is brought to you by the American Casino Guide, the number one best-selling book in the U.S. on casino gambling and travel, and the only book that comes with more than $1,000 in casino coupons. If you want to know more about the book, be sure to visit our website at AmericanCasinoGuide.com. This video features Jean Scott, who is also known as the Queen of Comps, and is about how to save money when planning a Las Vegas vacation. Jean is an expert on saving money in Las Vegas, and she has written several books on the subject, including Frugal Video Poker, The Frugal Gambler, and More Frugal Gambling. And now, here's Jean Scott. The first thing you want to do when you plan a trip to Las Vegas is you want to choose the best dates. Now, some people don't have much flexibility, but if you ha are more flexible, you're liable and much more able to save money. Uh, I can give you some hints here. Um, one of the best times to come is the, after the rodeo's over in December, the first two weeks in December, up and until then, after that's over and up to Christmas, that's a dead time of year. The casinos just want warm bodies in the casino. So, uh, and they figure if you're going to stay there, you're going to play there. Uh, so you often could get bargains during that. As a general rule, if you're not flexible, uh, a weekday uh, trip is better than a weekend trip. Uh, try to avoid holiday weekends, although there is an exception to that. The Thanksgiving weekend seems to be a family weekend and people stay home with their families. So sometimes you can get bargains on that holiday weekend. Another uh, time to avoid is when there are big conventions because prices go up uh, not only on holidays but during big conventions. Once you have the dates that you've chosen, you want to decide how to get to Vegas and how to get a room. You usually need, this is like a puzzle, you need to check both things. Um, if you're coming by car, of course, uh, you're a little more flexible. If you need to get airfare before, then you need to check the prices. And also, at the same time, you need to check the prices of the rooms. Well, sometimes you can get a bundle. You'll get a, a travel agency, you can look in the Sunday paper, and sometimes they'll have packages that bundle the air and the room together. And often you can get these packages that are not much more than the air itself. There's just one problem with a package. If you think you're going to be doing some playing and might get your room comped, once you've paid for a package, you can't get the room comped. If you've come to Vegas before and played some, you might have some mailings from casinos. That's one of the best ways to get rooms because uh, they give you either discounted or free rooms. Sometimes, particularly if it's not the most glamorous resort, some of the smaller places, they will give you free rooms or heavily discounted ones. The next thing that you'll probably want to plan is where you are eating. I have a really good tip for that as a frugal tip, and that is eat a late lunch as opposed to a dinner. The lunch prices are always cheaper than the dinner rate. And then underneath that, there's a little trick. If you're going to a buffet, a lot of buffets in Vegas don't shut down between lunch and dinner. They kind of keep going, but let's say they stay open till 3.30 or 4 for lunch, and then they raise the prices, sometimes as much as $10. It always was funny to me when I would be in the casino uh, buffet and I would see people lining up at five minutes after four, and I, I was there at five minutes before four, because the rates change at that, and you get the same food. Uh, they start bringing out the uh, little more exotic uh, offerings. So that's one of my best tips. There's another rather new development in food bargains in Las Vegas, and that is the package deal. Uh, check out, once you've chosen your hotel where you are going to stay or one that you're going to visit. Sometimes they have all-day packages. Uh, you pay one price and you can eat there, this is usually for the buffet, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you can go twice each meal period if you want to. Now this is for the heavy eaters uh, and it's for people that uh, don't want to be too adventuresome. 
to eat at the same buffet in the same hotel for all three meals could get pretty boring, and particularly if it's not the best buffet in the world. So if you know that it's a good buffet and that you can do that, but if you're going to be running all over town, uh, that might not be uh, convenient for you to come back for your free meal. There is another package that makes the time frame a little better, and that Harris has a package where you pay one price, and I think it's for like 24, 36 hours or something, and you can go to any Harris property buffet and eat. Again, this is for the big eaters that want to eat buffets three times a day, maybe four, and you have to really organize yourself to get around and check out the times and, and make out a schedule so you can get a good amount for your money. And also, this is much cheaper if you have a Harris card. So uh, in almost all of these, you need a slot card. There's a specialized hint that I have here. If you're around the sports book, or even if you're not a sports nut and you're hungry for a hot dog, at all the coast properties and at South Point, there's almost always a hot dog wagon near the sports book for all those hungry sports bettors. And usually you can get a hot dog for anywhere from 75 cents, a dollar, maybe a dollar and a quarter, and with all the toppings that you want, and that's a real bargain. If you come to Vegas, you probably just don't want to go to your room and stay there. Obviously, you want to uh, roam around and visit different casinos. And so people want to know the best way to get around. Well, the first thing, you sometimes have to get from the airport to your room. I have a little warning here. Be careful. Taxi rates are very, very high uh, in Vegas, some of the highest in the nation. And we have been known in Las Vegas, our taxi drivers, to take you the long way. So be aware of what they call long hauling. The one time a taxi might be a good uh, bargain is when there are a group of you, and then that cuts down. If you have just one or two people, the bus system is pretty good. There's a bus that goes up and down the strip, and particularly the bus goes downtown. So if you want to go downtown, which is a good little ways, um, that's a, a frugal way to do it. And sometimes there are shuttles. For instance, there's a shuttle uh, from the Hard Rock, which is off the Strip, to the Strip. And some of the other casinos do have. So if you're staying off the Strip, ask, your, uh, ask at the front de desk if there's a shuttle. Uh, the Palms is off the Strip, and they have a shuttle. One shuttle that goes all the way around is the Coast Property Shuttle and it goes to the Orleans, the Gold Coast, and then Bills that's on the Strip, so that's free. Uh, one way to get around town, not my favorite way, but uh, could be useful depending on where you're going, is to ride the monorail. The monorail is on the east side of the Strip. The problem with the monorail is if you're on the Strip, you, it seems like you walk miles to get to the monorail station. So, and then if you're only going a short distance, you think, well, I should have maybe just gone down the strip and walked down the strip. But you kind of have to look. Uh, another thing that some people do is they rent a car. Now, Las Vegas traffic, particularly around the strip, is horrendous. And a lot of people aren't comfortable. But if you have a group and you have a, a, a driver, car rentals are very, very expensive now compared to two or three years ago. Uh, there are coupons. Uh, that you can get on the internet. You can go to the, uh, if you have the American Casino Guide, uh, they have a coupon for rentals in there. Uh, sometimes it would be a frugal option, but not just for one or two people. Another option that I think is interesting for just sightseeing around town, there are nightclub tours, like if you want to go to several nightclubs, but you don't exactly know how to do that on your own, one of the tours will take you around and you don't have to stand in line. They get you right in. And also, just for going up and down the strip, there's an open deck, double-decker bus uh, like you have in England. And that's kind of fun, especially if the weather's good, to go up and down the strip. Of course, if you're in Las Vegas, you're going to say, well, I want to see a show. And there are so many shows to choose from. All right, here's the rule of thumb. The bigger the show, the more popular the show, the more expensive it's going to be, and there's less likely that you're going to be able to get a comp or find a discount. So there are a lot of what I call second-level shows that are in the afternoon or in the evening, particularly comedy shows. 
Uh, there's kind of a glut of comedy shows, and if you like those, uh, you can find discounts on those. The first thing, if you took a taxi, uh, as I did recently to the airport or back, uh, you'll find a little book in that back of the taxi seat, and it it ha it was just chock full of discounts on shows. I've been with people who have paid full price for a show, and in their hotel room was one of these freebie magazines with discounts on all sorts of shows. Uh, it's a matter of looking around. Sometimes these freebie magazines are at the bell desk in the hotel. Now, there is another way, uh, if you don't want to make reservations in advance, there's same-day discount uh, show stations around town. There's a couple different companies. One's called uh, Tickets Tonight, or they have names like that. And they'll have a list of shows, and usually uh, you would go there in the morning, and they would have shows usually just for that afternoon or evening. You usually will not find the biggest Cirque du Soleil shows, for instance, uh, but you'll, you'll get some of the others. Uh, especially in the recession, the shows are struggling to fill their seats. So whenever that happens, you're going to find some discounts. Also, Google free shows in Vegas. There are places that you can go and sign up where you can get free shows because they're last minute and they fill seats. One good source for show tickets, uh, and these you could look in, if you have the American Casino Guide book, uh, you have the coupons in that, uh, and you can look in advance and know that those are the ones that you want to check out, and the desk count could be pretty considerably. Uh, another hint for somebody who plays, and that is you can sometimes ask your host or a host if you don't have one of your own. Uh, particularly, let's say you're sitting at a blackjack table. You've been playing for several hours, uh, maybe not at the minimum, but a little more than the minimum. Uh, you can say to the pit boss or ask the dealer to uh, tell the pit boss, uh, you can say, look, I'm kind of interested in going to a show tonight. Uh, any way to get a, a discounted ticket for that? That won't always score you a show, but many times it will. If you're a machine player, then you need to go to a, one of the hosts, um, and you can always ask for a host, um, ask a, a floor person, I want to talk to a host. And you'd be surprised, particularly this is a good thing, to ask the host about an hour before the show. Sometimes they just have show tickets in their, in their little booklet that they have, and they'll say, oh, sure, I got a ticket here. Uh, so you can maybe make a good score that way. Of course, you probably didn't come to Vegas just to eat and see shows and just go around and sightsee. You might have come for, to gamble, too. Surprise, surprise. And people are saying, well, I don't have very much. I don't have a very big bankroll. What could I, could I gamble some and not spend so much money? Well, it took me four books to give all the hints that I know about saving money and gambling, and I assume that if you're serious about gambling, Maybe you have read or you will read so that you gamble wiser so that you don't lose so much money. But if you haven't had time to study uh, and you don't want to study, you just want to go for luck, but you don't have much money either, here's some hints. The first thing is, and this is probably the number one hint, play at the lowest denomination you can. I see people go in and, and they want to play the $5 machines. They only have $100. They're going to be here for three, three days. You know, that could swallow you up in, in two minutes or even less. So if you're going to play the machines, play a low denomination. If you're going to play the tables, find the, the lowest denomination table you can do with the lowest minimums. Uh, a hint here is the smaller casinos usually have lower minimums, and particularly downtown is just full of casinos with sometimes dollar blackjack. Uh, you can usually find lower minimums during the week than on the weekend, but downtown you can always find them. You can even find quarter craps downtown. And when you're playing blackjack and craps or roulette, and you're playing at this low denomination, you can still whoop it up and have fun with all the people that are playing with you. And after all, that's what you want to do, have fun, isn't it? You can order the same drinks as the people in the high limit. 
And so even if you play just pennies, people say, okay, I don't have hardly any money at all, I say, and I want to play the machines. Okay, find a penny machine that has the fewest lines that you can find. Sometimes they're just 20 lines. Don't have one of these that's got 500 lines. 20 lines, then play one penny a line. A little trick is, and a little hint here, is that if you play every line, even the minimum of each line, you're going to get all the bonuses, uh, the little pictures that come up, the little games, extra bonuses, and so forth. Obviously, your bonuses and stuff won't be as big, but you can have the fun of the bonuses. Of course, I would be uh, remiss to not mention coupons. You know, before I was the queen of comps, I was the queen of coupon. Uh, and I still use coupons, and particularly for the low roller, coupons are a good use of your money, your gambling bankroll, because they take a lot of time. Uh, I have friends who go all over the city and do nothing but use coupons. They take up a lot of time. They're having a lot of fun. Uh, you say, well, where do I get these coupons? Well, sometimes when you check into a casino, they give you a coupon book. Uh, if, again, I mentioned the American Casino Guide and the Las Vegas Advisor both have a lot of coupons in their books. Uh, coupons is a way to stretch your entertainment time, which is what I emphasize, particularly when you don't have much money or you don't come to Vegas very long for very often or very long at a time. The point is you want to have fun, and coupons will stretch your fun. If I had to give one hint and only one about your trip to Las Vegas, I would say emphasize the free things that Las Vegas has. If you just Google free activities in Las Vegas, you will be amazed at what you can do. I can just name probably a dozen right off. You know, you can watch the gondolas of, uh, at the Venetian. Uh, you can watch the uh, volcano erupt at the Mirage. You can watch the dancing waters at Bellagio. I could go on and on. And there are internet sites that list literally hundreds of free things. I have had friends come to Vegas who did not gamble, and they did not ga gamble, and they kept busy every minute they were here by just doing free things. If you want to know more about me and some of the things I've written, you can go to my website, which is queenofcomps, no spaces, dot com, and on there, there will be a list of the books I have written, the Frugal series. A lot of them will show you how to play video poker and have more fun in Las Vegas. Don't forget that you can see more of our educational gambling videos on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash American Casino Guide.